Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, October 12th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Atlantic, and uh, there's Tropical Storm Fay moving quickly by Bermuda last night. Peak wind gusts recorded at 82 miles per hour there. As that came through, nasty night uh, is now moving quickly away, and the weather will clear up nicely later today. Um, strong tropical storm through there will recurve out to sea, affecting no other land areas. We're now turning our attention to Invest 90L following behind Fay, and uh, this has a nice curly Q look to it now. We can see a vigorous mid-level circulation here, and it's hard to tell whether there's actually a surface circulation uh, down below. We do have um, northerlies. It's hard to see if we have westerlies and northwesterlies on the backside. There's a recon plane scheduled this afternoon that will give us a better idea of whether this has actually become a tropical depression. Now, the big question is if this has developed and is uh, becoming a tropical cyclone, will it strengthen as it moves through the northern Lesser Antilles and the Puerto Rico area? And uh, right now, if we look at the water vapor imagery, upper level winds are a little bit lighter than yesterday, so it's not quite as unfavorable aloft for this system. This upper low is still pretty far off to the west, and that will be coming south with time. But there's all this dry air to the north of the system. If we look at visible, this is this uh, ridge that came in behind Fay here, and the source region for this air, it's all coming out of the northeast Atlantic. This is where the water is cool. Some of it may be from Africa. And so this dry air, uh, this air is very dry and cool. And if we look at the close up, what we see is that all the dry air is up to the north, but look at the inflow. If you look at the air coming into the western side of the system here, some of it is coming directly from this area here. If you follow those low level clouds, some of it is getting pulled into the western side of the little circulation. And you do see that it's kind of keeping the thunderstorms at bay on this side. Now, as long as this continues, I think this is going to really hamper development. And the thunderstorms here are already kind of weak and lackluster as it is. And I mean, we've seen this song and dance so many times now where you get systems approaching the Lesser Antilles. Unless the thunderstorms really impress me, there's usually no good reason to believe that this is going to intensify significantly. And right now, it looks like it will be held back by this dry air. And although the H wharf, remember the H wharf was showing a hurricane in the Northern Antilles as this thing came through. That's how ridiculous uh, some of those projections can get when the models aren't sniffing out the dry air getting pulled into the circulation. And right now, this is certainly going to be no hurricane anytime soon, and this uh, may struggle even becoming a moderate tropical storm as it moves through this area here. Now, when it gets north of Puerto Rico, that's when it may start shaking off some of this dry air under a little bit more favorable environment aloft, and this dry air starts getting washed out. We may, may see it intensify more here as it starts recurving, and this has been the area this year up in here where storms have wanted to intensify. We've seen Faye do it, we've seen uh, Arthur do it, we've seen uh, Edouard do it, and uh, what may, may be Gonzalo here will probably do it as well. Once it gets farther north, again out of the deep tropics, that's where it has been most favorable this season. Out here in the main development region, they've been struggling and uh, 90L looks very similar to other systems we've had in this area this season. Uh, thunderstorms having a hard time being sustained and you need that convection to occur consistently over the core of the system and you need the core protected. It's all nice if you get this curly Q shape, but if you have dry air being entrained, it's just not going to allow significant deepening of the storm. So as we talked about yesterday, probably heavy rains and gusty winds, perhaps a tropical storm force in the Northern Antilles and uh, approaching Puerto Rico as well. But I think this will struggle to strengthen um, until it gets north of Puerto Rico. The NHC does not have a forecast out yet as it has not designated the system, but its official projection for this will come out as soon as this becomes a tropical depression. Now for the forecast track of this, we know it's heading for the Northern Antilles and Puerto Rico area, but what about after that? We've been talking about the potential for this to make it to the Turks and Caicos, and right now this is the GFS out to day five, showing our system, you see the trough over New England moving its way out in this front that comes down, pushes this out to sea toward the north. That's what the GFS has been showing from the beginning. This is the European showing our system here. At the same valid time, you see the trough over the Ohio Valley, and you see the timing difference uh, between the trough on the GFS and the trough on the Euro continues. However, if you look on the Euro, 
by the time we get out to next Thursday night now, here's the storm, and is there really anything left in here to drive this west? We've got the ridge near Bermuda and the ridge over the western gulf, and really this weakness in between looks too potent to allow this to drift west into the central Bahamas or the Turks and Caicos. So the European ends up stalling this and uh, it starts moving northeast and you get a hurricane southeast Bermuda. And this is something now that uh, Bermuda, you know, might get clipped by on the way out to sea here. So that's still worth watching for them. But it's beginning to look like uh, this trough coming in is deep enough that there's really no ridge left here to drive this toward the Turks and Caicos. Uh, as it uh, comes this direction. So it's likely to stall out here and then turn its way to the northeast and most of the models agree with that now but again the official forecast track from the NHC will come out as soon as this is designated a tropical storm or depression. Now here's uh, the Central Pacific we'll talk about quickly. We've been uh, mentioning this pattern where we're starting to get a lot of convection in the tropics here and uh, we are starting to see some organization as we talked about this pattern is incubating this region and this is now Invest 91E uh, that uh, may move toward the northwest, toward the Hawaiian Islands here. And this is the forecast track. Models bringing it uh, pretty close, a little too close for comfort. And uh, although this is not likely to be in an, env in an environment that would allow significant strengthening, it's very possible we could have a strong tropical storm in this area getting relatively close to the islands in several days. And if we look at the water vapor imagery, we have this big ridge that's kind of off the screen here being pumped up by Typhoon Vongfong recurving out to sea. You see this upper low backing away and then you see this other upper low east of Hawaii. That's going to be following in this one's tracks also backing toward the southwest and upper lows backing away from a tropical system coming northwest. That is a situation that is favorable to allow ventilation and strengthening of the system as it moves. Now there's a lot of dry mid-level air in this area to the north and that's what may limit this as it comes west-northwest. But late season storms coming out of the central Pacific and getting relatively close to Hawaii are not at all uncommon and uh, it may be that uh, we at least clip Hawaii with some kind of tropical weather next week. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching.